Well hey guys, welcome back and now in this episode I am taking you on a cheeky little test ride So I am on my way to the dealership now to pick up the bike So if you are interested in my first impressions review of the all new for 2020 BMW S1000 XR Then I'll see you in minutes few Bang on time, well actually five minutes before, very military, five minutes before parade There she is, look, that is what we are about to take out Kiwi! I'm allowed to take it for an hour, but the next guy is testing at 11 o'clock, so bugger. Hello, can you see me? God, how quiet is this? Helps if you start it, Sean, you donut. So here we have the new for 2020, the S1000 XR from BMW. Now, if you are new to the channel, this is a bike um, that I owned for just under three years, the previous generation to this bike. So I know it pretty well. And uh, I thought, you know, it'd be time to get out and have a test on the new baby. Now, it doesn't really look fantastic with this new TFT jobber in front here. I was kind of hoping that they would upgrade this bike a lot um, a lot sooner. This bike remained unchanged for many years, so uh, I'm glad that they've uh, decided to give it an overhaul. Now, I threw this out on social media before I, uh, before I went out on this test ride, uh, just to ask if you had any questions you wanted answering um, now that I've been able to get out on the bike. So I shall uh, do my best to answer them as we go along. So we'll go for a bit of a ride. I've got the bike for an hour. Um, I'll stop over somewhere and uh, we'll have a good look round uh, the bike shortly but for now I just need to get out of the town and find somewhere nice to ride so what have they changed for 2020 well a lot now with all new bikes uh, nowadays they've having, been having to strip and um, weight off the bikes to compensate for the extra gubbins that they've had to add to the bike for the Euro 5 BS so the bike itself is much lighter I think it's 226 kilos wet so fully loaded so that is not particularly heavy at all for for such a big bike now this is a big bike it's a tall bike I think you're looking at a seat height of uh, 838 millimeters so uh, by no means um, a short bike why is there a warning light on we're about to run out of fuel so that is something to keep in mind and it is a question I have been asked I'm six foot two and uh, I can flat foot this bike but I'm quite a tall guy but you would uh, you would struggle if you were a shorter purse on but it's a bike i've always thought it's one of the only bikes that i think this way actually if it doesn't make it hopefully it makes sense it's a bike that you kind of sit in and not on if that makes any sense whatsoever yeah so it's a seat it's kind of like a pan of the seat it's really sort of uh shaped <laughs> to, to the shape of an r so you kind of sit in the seat rather than on it and i find it um extremely comfortable But with this bike, it's not. It's never been an, um, a bike that's sort of loud uh, with regards to exhaust tones. But you get a beautiful sound out of the airbox on the S1000s. So down low, it's really quiet. But if you rip it, she comes alive and makes a beautiful. It's a beautiful tone out of the sound box, which I really loved and always have done. So what else have they done to it? They've, out of stripping off a lot of weight, with a few facts and figures, they've stripped off 19% weight on the swing arm, this all new swing arm. The um, engine has been uh, reduced 5% in weight. So they've actually stripped a lot of uh, weight off the bike, as I said, to compensate for the Euro 5 gubbins. And slightly up the power. Now, uh, the previous model was 160 brake horsepower. This is now 165, with 84 pounds, uh, foot pounds of torque. So definitely no slouch. We are actually in road mode at the moment, which I don't want to be in. So she is definitely no slouch. Now, is this a sports touring machine? Um, although uh, more, more road orientated, you can do a bit of off-road on it if you wished to. Um, but it's generally been designed for the tarmac. Now, a lot of you have asked how it compares to the Super Duke GT. Some of you have uh, stated that you would either like to buy this bike or the Super Duke GT. Which would you get? 
Um, for me, this uh, S1000XI is a much, much bigger bike than the Super Duke GT, um, and it's sort of more comfort orientated. It's not that the Super Duke is uncomfortable, but it's a lot more sportier position on the on the KTM, and it's a much smaller bike. This is this is huge. This thing. So. Um, if you're if you're really up for just sort of munching miles and touring on these sorts of machines then you can slap some panniers better on this bike and probably go two up would be better on this bike and more comfortable for your pillion than the super duke gt but with regards to the spec they're pretty much the same now so uh no difference really in what you get for your money talking about money though this bike is much more expensive than the super duke i think the new super duke uh, for 2020 you're looking around 18,300 euros whereas this you're looking nearly 20,000 euros depending on what spec you buy obviously but for a fully loaded um super duke gt here it's around 18.3 and this will be knocking on the door of 20 if you go fully balls out and get everything on it that you wish now here in Germany the um, the models are slightly different to what you're used to in the UK. I'm not really familiar with the specs and the models and what you call them in the UK. I think you can get this as the um, XR Sport. Um, but here you basically buy the standard bike and you, um, you chuck whatever extras you want on it. You can get a touring package, which means you get then this um, powered cradle for the nav 6 um, already wired into the bike you don't get the sat nav but you get the the powered cradle there ready to sit your or ready to house your sat nav you then get panniers um, all kinds of other bits and bobs for touring wise hand guards i think and you can get the dynamic package which means you then get um, the quick shifter and down blipper um, you get two extra riding modes now i'm, I'm not um that's how it worked on my bike if the standard bike you would get um, rain and road mode and if you got the dynamic package you would then get dynamic and dynamic pro now dynamic pro would mean to actually release dynamic pro which was kind of like a track modus or a trap mode you'd have to stick a dongle in the in the wiring loom under the seat which would then free up the extra mode now i'm not sure if that's um, the case uh, on this bike i could probably have a look under the seat and see if uh, I can see one because this is a fully loaded bicycle. Now we're in dynamic suspension mode as it has semi-active suspension we're in dynamic and it is actually pretty soft I'm getting a really sort of soft ride it's a lot different to my uh, how I've set mine up on my GT you know I ride my GT everything in sport suspension in sport and sport mode so it's pretty hard and I've always found that on the Super Duke GT it's a very hard ride but I kind of like it for that but this is a much softer relaxed machine we've got an adjustable screen which is a lot easier to adjust than the old one i think the old one you had to kind of rag it up but now we've got a little handle so on the fly no worries at all now the main question that i want to answer that you've all been asking is have they improved the vibrations on this bike now from first impressions i would say yes it has been or has been known to be a vibey bike and you uh, got a high frequency buzz in the bars which made a lot of people's hands fall asleep uh, mine was the same but it never really bothered me to be honest i knew when the when it was going to be vibey it was around sort of 5000 revs and uh, it was it was it wasn't bad i mean i i added some uh, heavier bar ends which improved it greatly and uh, but I never really found it an issue. Now, some people always said they never even noticed it themselves, where others at the end, the other end of the scale said it was it was terrible um, and they wouldn't even buy it, it completely destroyed their ride. Now, it's not vibey at all, um, nothing, I would say. So greatly improved, whether they've done anything, I don't know if they put some dampers in the top, don't know, but as I said, the engine has been totally revised, so maybe they've got rid of that issue. That being said as well, with the with the vibrations, it always knocked the mirrors, and uh, you could hardly see anything out of the mirror, especially um, especially the left one on my bike. But these are crystal clear, so vibes, I would say, ladies and gents, have been sorted. We've now been introduced to a little cubby hole there, look, so you can put your business cards in there, so you can fling your business cards or your dollar bills. Well, you probably won't fling any dollar bills after you bought this bike because you'd be skinned. We are rocking now keyless on the S1000XR, so new to 2020, we've got a keyless ride. 
Now I am not on this test ride, I haven't already got time, I'm not going to cipher through all this new TFT connectivity display because I don't know it at all myself and uh, it'll just take up too much time buggering about with it but it's a beautiful TFT display, got introduced on the new GS and out of last year and the year before they started introducing it onto the, the R line, the R1250s, the R1200s even had it and the, I think the XR and the RR are the last bikes in the range to receive this new display so but it's absolutely stunning I would I would like to get it into sport mode though how the oh there we go road rain dynamic oh this hasn't got dynamic pro so that would suggest to me that this doesn't have the dongle in it dynamic how the hell do I get it into sport mode? Sport. Are we now in sport? No idea. Gives you all the your nice sort of stuff. Tire pressure gauges is standard. Tells you your outside temperature, your revs, speed. What is that? Max lean angle? All kinds of stuff on there. It's got a six axis IMU on this, so all the good stuff with regards to electronics. Got a brake indicator, a brake, a gear indicator there at the top. But I think with all these TFT displays, you can pretty much customize them how you want them to look. So, oh, she sounds beautiful. I love this noise from this bike. When you really give it the full pasty, then the sound out of the airbox is, is so addictive. Now, as I said, you get pretty much no exhaust tones. I can't even hear. I can hardly hear the exhaust. Now the exhaust has been um, shaped and redesigned as well. It's a much smaller exhaust than on the previous bike, but it is very quiet. I can hardly hear any, uh, any exhaust tone at all. Now I changed the exhaust on my um, S1000s, which uh, made it sound a bit more meaty. And if you chuck like a K&N or a race air filter into the bike, you get an even nicer sound out of the airbox. Now, yes, for you guys all over the world and around in the UK and whatnot, I appreciate you guys can pretty much do what you want with regards to exhaust. But in this country, we cannot. So uh, I'm not going to even attempt to elaborate on what you can do to your exhaust to make it sound even nicer. But I have seen um, and seen and heard S1000 XRs with full Acra systems, Acra headers all the way straight through pipes, all the way down to the rear of the bike. And it sounds fantastic. So there are obviously things you can do to make this sound louder but as I said out of the box this bike is pretty quiet I find this bike much easier to ride than the KTM that's probably one thing that I would um, add um, I think it's just how you're positioned on the bike it's slightly more relaxed position although I've got a slightly acute angle on the knee bend um, but it's kind of a bit more armchair sort of bike you can sit as I said you sat in it you're kind of upright you're not lent over on my bike on the KTM is slightly lent forward um, so I would say to answer the question what would be the best bike for me I'm looking for a sports tourer and the S1000 XR and the Super Duke GT are the only bikes um, that come into question oh god yo yeah, well, come on then you've started you if you are looking for a bit more comfort with with some good performance power where you can go two up, happily get some luggage strapped onto the back of this, it's a much bigger bike, then go for this bike. But if you're, if you're a solo rider um, and you really want that mental bonkers shit your pants stuff um, with regards to power, then go for the Super Duke GT. I've not taken a pillion on my bike, on my, on my KTM, but I would imagine it's fairly uncomfortable. This would be the bike to go for if you like to take your lovely lady on tours with you. So what else have we got on board now we're here? We've got some illuminated black switch gear now. It used to be grey, but apparently this is illuminated. So we've got cruise control here left. We've got some cornering lights now, which have been added to this bike. That wasn't on the previous bike, so that's another tick in the box that kind of matches it with spec for the KTM. My KTM does have cornering lights. This now also has them. 
it has semi-active suspension which you can adjust on the fly you've got your menus where you can adjust all kinds of bits and bobs check out what the bike is doing so that's on the right hand side here we've got our indicators horn and we've got this little jog dial here which then um, you can then navigate through your menu system and you can even switch up and down once you if you've nav or if you've bought the nav 6 they work together with each other so you then can control your sat nav from this switch gear rather than having to tip on the screen so that's another good thing so on the right we've got our heated grips button uh, i think they're three times three levels of adjustability one two and three or off and we've got our mode button there where you can change on your fly your riding mode so we are in dynamic as we speak you can change to rain or road on this machine but as i said with the dongle you can you can get dynamic pro we've got uh, tracks and control abs is standard all that sort of good stuff which is pretty much included on all new bikes nowadays We've got all other kinds of good stuff with, within the electronics passage. You've got the MSR, which is uh, basically um, helps you when you're stamping down the gears at high speeds and uh, you're off the revs that it stops the, uh, the rear wheel from locking up and gives you a bit better stability when you're really on the beans. In fact, there's a nice place to stop down here that we'll stop and have a look around the bike. Now they have um, changed the brakes on this bike. We're still rocking a 320 millimeter floating disc, but they've got rid of the Brembo four pot calipers and gone with the BMW um, four pots fixed caliper. So, but they're still, still really powerful brakes. So no issues with that. And they really are good, the brakes. Do you have to be a bit ginger with this bike because if I crash it, there's an excess of 1,500 euros and that would, uh, that would smart a tad. So here she is, available in red and grey, um, but I think red is the way to go, a bit of Ferrari red. There she is, looks absolutely fantastic. Now, straight away, what uh, comes to mind is the massive radiator. It was the same on the last bike. You've got you've to get some sort of um, protection for that because the stones will fly up and... Uh, damage that for sure so that's always one thing to add to the bike yeah so here you've got the the smaller exhaust and that is much smaller but as you probably heard you can hardly hear the thing so uh that would have to go yeah so as i said 320 mil discs floating discs on the front with the new um, bmw calipers four pot calipers they've ditched brembo for some reason i'm not sure why that is but still they work pretty good there you can see there the all new um, revised swinging arm and they've actually changed and chopped weight off the frame the frame is a bit more flexible um, which apparently um, makes handling a lot more easier or a lot more agile agility is much improved slightly different for 2020 as well with regards to the pannier system on mine you used to have a frame a frame that came down here that was fixed on which you couldn't remove where well, you could remove it but it wasn't quick release or anything but now they've changed that and the panniers then sit into the two grooves there so there's a lot less sort of scaffolding and framing on the bike so that's that's a nice touch it has got a large ass end but as i said it's a bit more touring orientated this bike um than the super duke tt so um you've got a lot more space on the back for your pillion you've got your grab rails there and you can fit the um top box and panniers if you wanted to and you've got there your center stand which is a nice touch you don't get that on a super duke gt it's not even possible to fit an aftermarket one on so that's another thing to think about looking at the front um yeah she's had a bit of a facelift it looks looks kind of similar but there you've got your led daytime running lights and the, the headlights are also led that wasn't the case on the older bike you only had led daytime running lights led indicators as uh, standard as i said before we've got now cornering lights on on this machine so basically it's like on the super duke gt as you turn the corner the lights um i don't i think the lights may obviously change angle on this one on mine i've got the lights that run down the side cowls and basically they illuminate in stages as you lean the bike so that might be slightly different what tires are we rocking this year We've got the Metzler Rotex um, on this machine. Now it does vary um, country to country what uh, what tyres come as standard, but Metzler's on this particular machine. Yeah, so as I said, the seat, a lot of you have asked about the seat and some of you said that they found it uncomfortable. I never found it uncomfortable. And as I said, this sort of pan, it's a, it's a pan. So you sit, you sit 
in it rather than on it if you like you've got this big big uh, um, panel on the front of the tank so you kind of sit in the bike I really like it so very spongy comfortable thumbs up for me on the uh, the seat all right it's enough of that let's get back on and enjoy this bike a little more very cool <laughs> With the seat being as sort of panned as it is, it's a bit more difficult to to move around on the bike. It's definitely a very more or a bike that you need to ride in a more neutral position. Having said that, it is possible, but you get a massive bit of um, paneling in the your ass crack. Now I must admit though, I mean from coming from the Super Duke, it's not it's not hitting me in the face with, with raw power. The power is there, but it being an inline four, the power band or you know your sort of max power is a lot higher up. I think it's about nine and a half thousand revs you're at your max sort of uh, power. So lower down it doesn't really knock you off your bike or anything, it's a bit more uh, a bit more relaxed than the Super Duke. The Super Duke has a lot of low down power, which uh, which hits you in the face immediately. Now this, when you give it four beans on an arm in fourth gear, there, um, it does have a bit of lag further down. But as soon as you uh, as soon as you get higher up the rev range, as with a lot of uh, inline fours, that's where the power then comes into play. But it is very effortless. I mean, it is an easy bike to ride. That has to be said. And although a lot of you asked why I got rid of mine and got the Super Duke, um, I suppose it comes back to because it is so smooth and so refined, um, it became from it became boring over a time. If you like, it is a fantastic bike, no doubts about it. But it is because it is so good and so refined. It kind of it's, it's a bit characterless for me or it became over time you know when you first get it obviously new bikes it's all exciting the power is there but as I said it, for me it, it just it just got a bit boring for me and it had to go now especially there was another thing that was an issue with this bike and with the S1000R and the RR they had a, a certain batch of bikes where there was a hardening issue on the material on the cams um, and I had to have all new camshafts after 4,000 kilometers and it cut but even though I got sorted out at BMW and the, the issue got fixed um, it kind of ruined the bike for me because I was always um, I was always li listening to it and it kind of uh, got on the wick you know I was thinking every time I was riding it I was like this sounds rough as rough as old boots um, as I said although the the issue got sorted out and the all the cams got replaced it did it did kind of ruin the bike for me because as I said I was always listening um, to see if it was knackered but you know I mean with every manufacturer they can have issues with certain batches of parts or whatever can go wrong on the bike for me that's all part of ownership the most important thing is is that you get your customer service and you get looked after which which I did so you know these things happen there's no point in uh, in moaning about it too much as long as you get sorted out then uh, all is good it just comes alive above nine grand that's where you uh, you really get the kick in the pants but like with any sort of inline fawn especially this bike like I can sit at 70 k's an hour 60 k's an hour can we go all the way down to 50 55 49 and you can still ride this bike in six gear now my bike would be shaking its head all over the place now that is something else to um, keep in mind if you've never owned a, um, a v-twin it rides completely different now on the v-twin on the ktm if i'm sat riding at 50 k through the town i have to be in second or third gear anything higher than that and it'll be it'll be screaming at you it'll be shaking its head all over the place but this is a bike there we are 40 k's 45 k's fifth gear sixth gear 
50k an hour absolutely no problems the fuel in is great twist of the throttle full gas yes you get some lag but it doesn't whinge at all lower down so to go back to that question if you are if you're a more sort of reserved um, rider and you just want to chill with uh, um, that extra added bonus of having having a good lot of power then this bike is the way for you if you're a bit more of an animal and you want to get hit in the face by some brutal force and power and uh, go for the gtm Whoa. bumpy road it does handle the bumps pretty well i would be uh, losing some teeth on my bike if uh, if it gets a bit bumpy i've not been using the down blipper just because i'm not used to it anymore because my bike doesn't have one but it is absolutely butter smooth now the quick shifter on this bike has always been amazing and the down blipper as well absolutely butter smooth you hardly even you hardly even feel that the gear has gone in But as long as you're in a lower gear and you keep the rev range high, the power is there instantly. So it is a bike you can go absolutely mental on, you just got to ride it different to a V-twin. Now I suppose it also comes down to, is it worth the uh, the mental money this, this bike costs? As I said, this is going to be knocking on the door of €20,000 here for a fully loaded. And for me personally, I don't know, it's just a, I'm a bit of a tart for uh, technology and new bits and bobs, so I always go full spec. Um, but for me, as I said, the inline four, this bike just became a bit, a bit boring for me, and, and the KTM sort of, I don't know. Every time I ride that KTM, um, I get a, I get a buzz every time I ride it. Now this is a slightly more relaxed bike, so you don't get that on this bike. Um, which I kind of I kind of need if you like the Super Duke can be at times it can be a pig to ride now it is it can knock you off um, if you're not paying attention if you're riding it in sports mode um, if you're not uh, new to or if you're new to the bike it can it could throw you off I mean it's a, it's a, not an easy bike to ride with it's a, with it's just it's raw grunt not to say that the throttle is snatchy or anything but it's definitely there immediately in your face so it's not really if you make mistakes on that bike it's not very forgiving this bike oh, this bike is a bit more forgiving yeah i mean what else is there to say about it? i mean i think it's a great bike i think they have what the updates that they've done on this bike um have made it have knocked it up a couple of notches Unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the review there, guys. Um, as I sat at the set of traffic lights, I lost power on my helmet camera, so I changed the battery and I must have knocked the microphone out of its port, so lost all audio on the remainder of the review. Not too much of a worry, because I was on my way back to the dealership to give the bike back. My hour was then up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did like what you saw make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Bike reviews aren't the only thing that, um, that I do on this channel, I do all kinds of touring videos, product reviews, garage videos, so if you do like what you saw make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button to make sure you're notified every time I upload a video. Extra special thanks goes out to the guys over on the Patreon page. Now the Patreon page has been growing substantially over the last couple of months so an extra massive thank you goes out to you guys for supporting the channel. Links are in the description to my Patreon page where you can show your appreciation and support for the channel in my quest to improve the quality and the quantity of my videos so massive thank you uh, goes out to you guys. So I guess we are done for this episode. As I said make sure you hit that like button and I will see you out there. See you in the next one.